Hey guys, it's Dr. Tiffany. So today's topic is on nightmares. Nothing's worse than waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, clammy and sticky with your heart pounding. It feels impossible to fall back asleep. And sometimes it actually is impossible to fall back asleep. We ask ourselves, why do we even have nightmares in the first place? Well, on another note, nightmares are extremely fascinating. What happens is that the subconscious starts to resurface to the conscious awareness in those nightmares. So it's like the brain is relaying messages to us so that we can understand what our thought processes are and what's really, really bothering us so we can be real with ourselves. Seems like something that we have to confront. Oftentimes, nightmares are brought about because of anxiety and stress. We could be going through relationship changes. We could be going through changes in the workplace, in the family environment. You name it, all sort of circumstances can bring us to the point of having anxiety and feeling vulnerable. Also, if we've had an event that compromised us as well, like a traumatic situation, our brain tends to replay that over and over and over again. And oftentimes that traumatic event resurfaces in our nightmares, sometimes in the same way and sometimes in different fashions. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about sleep and how nightmares come about. So we have four stages of sleep. I guess technically you could consider it five because we consider REM sleep like a fifth stage. The first four stages of sleep are super important for the body and the muscles to have that restoration. It's to rejuvenate ourselves. Obviously, that's why we sleep, right? But then the last stage being REM, that's dedicated specifically to our brain. So what does REM stand for? It stands for rapid eye movement. So literally our eyes are moving back and forth in our head over and over and over again multiple times. If you have a young child or a significant other and you're watching them sleep maybe during nap time on the couch or even at night and you can see that their eyelids are moving, that's because they're in REM sleep. REM sleep is where the brain processes everything. It's like trying to make templates and filing cabinets for every circumstance and situation in our life. Our brain loves to make sense of things. If you know, sometimes if you've ever been a student and you study right before bed in that 20 minute window, you're gonna be rehearsing it over and over and over again. And in the morning, you're gonna wake up a genius having remembered everything. That's the brilliance, what we call long-term potentiation, but that is the brilliance of the brain during REM sleep. Think of it like a little computer going back and forth and back and forth. Now, during REM sleep, that's when we have our nightmares naturally. Some people tend to sleepwalk in their REM sleep. So when you think of going down in surgery, when they put you down, they don't put you in REM sleep because they don't want you walking off the operating table. That would be super scary. <laughs> so we put you in a deeper sleep that relaxes all the muscles in your body. So REM sleep is exclusive, like I said earlier, to the brain. So the reason these dreams keep resurfacing is because something is unprocessed. Something feels unresolved. And if you look back at some of my other vlogs on how trauma impacts the brain, you'll understand better as to why the brain has a hard time letting go of certain things. It hasn't made sense of it. And we have to make sense of it by bringing it to the conscious awareness. There are many trauma treatments that use REM sleep style, maybe not many trauma treatments, just one, and it's an awesome form of treatment. It's called EMDR, that's eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. I love that form of therapy and I use it all the time on my patients with tremendous success. So look up EMDR, I'll do another vlog on that for another date. So let's go back to the topic of nightmares. If you're having a nightmare, it's because something feels unprocessed, something doesn't feel right in your life. Sometimes our nightmares seem really weird and super abstract, but that's because the brain's digesting all kinds of information and different things fall into digestion at different times and they come together to create the context of a certain type of story that's happening in your mind's eye. So how do we overcome nightmares? Well, there has been a treatment called nightmare rescripting. And nightmare rescripting is very interesting. It's super wacky, but also really, really cool. It's like rewriting your own movie, right? So let's have an example. Let me think of one. Okay, so imagine I had a real life experience. Imagine that. 
and the real life experience is that I'm abducted, okay? And then when I'm abducted, bad things end up happening to me in that traumatic event, right? So then I start having nightmares of being abducted over and over and over again, and I can't stop those nightmares, and the nightmares continue to go, okay? So when we're rescripting, we want to stop the nightmare at a critical point, right? So in that nightmare of being abducted, the critical point would be when the vehicle comes, it's coming to get me, and they're ready to step out of the vehicle, that is the turning point, right? Where all the, the trauma and other stuff that comes into my nightmares comes into play, right? It's the biggest part that I absolutely need to avoid. So during that part, if the vehicle is coming forward, what I wanna do is pause the dream right there, okay? This is in my rescripting, okay? I know sometimes we can't always do that in our nightmares. You know, there's a movie about that. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I can't do that. Most people can't, all right? So we just, in our mind's eye, when we're rescripting it, we pause in that immediate moment when the vehicle's coming. And then, this is where it gets good, we create something that is super outrageous to happen next, okay? So I love fantasy and I love unicorns. So what I want in my fantasy for my nightmare is to have a unicorn fly in right on top of the vehicle that's pulling up, getting ready to abduct me. So the unicorn flies out, lands on top of the vehicle, you know, and I in these, in these rescriptings that we do, we wanna make sure that we put tons of tons of detail into the description. So I'll be like, well, the unicorn had uh, a golden horn and the wings were white and pearly and a bit iridescent every time they moved at a different angle. And every time the unicorn moved its wings, I could kind of feel the flow of air coming my way. So it's really specific. The unicorn had violet eyes and was looking at me and made a strange sound. And then I get onto the unicorn, jump on the unicorn's back and we fly away. But the more details that you can involve in that dream, the more, um, of your five senses, you know, whether it's the sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, whatever those five are, and you put them all together and you describe the story that transpires, what you end up doing is rewriting the nightmare. The key to that is once you have a definitive plan and a definitive story on how to rewrite that nightmare, you have to practice it and rehearse it over and over again. Remember, the brain is a series of neural networks that connects. All right, neurons that wire together, fire together, or fire together, wire together, goes the same way. You want to create that storyline. Remember, the nightmare you've been having is a really, really powerful storyline because you've been having it multiple times over. So when you rescript something, it has to be even stronger. So that means you should rehearse it, you know, couple times a day. Maybe you do it when you're awake and you are in the middle of the day, or it could be immediately before bed. I think that can kind of be helpful, right? Because if we study immediately before bed, it sticks really well. We've discovered that. So why not rehearse that nightmare immediately before bed as well? You go over it in your mind's eye over and over again and repeating it. And guess what? You'll end up sleeping through the night without the nightmare. Sometimes you don't remember the creative, wacky rescripting that you did. Sometimes it doesn't even come up in your dreams. But the point is, you slept through the night, okay? Because it's unremarkable to your brain, and it's not something that is stressing your fight or flight reaction or your autonomic nervous system, you're gonna sleep through it. So don't be surprised if you rescript and you never actually feel like you remember having the dream. You're probably having it. We don't remember all of our dreams and all of our nightmares. They don't always come to the conscious awareness, okay? So today was a little bit different um, as I gave you a technique to scripting your nightmares. Remember, detail is key. So is creativity. We want it to be something that's abstract. We don't want it to be something that's plain day that could just be very ordinary. We want it to be abstract and surreal so that the brain knows that it's not an imminent danger. All right, well, I hope that this has helped you so that you can try and rescript some of your nightmares. And if anything comes up, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please write in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate you so much and I hope that you have a wonderful week and don't forget, push the love forward.